Welcome to Books, Beauty, and Business. Our goal is to motivate and inspire others to push limits, test boundaries, and climb personal ladders of success. My name is Tawny Bro, and I am so excited to have with us today Chelsea Haynes. She is a certified gut health coach specializing in health optimization through gut health and the abundance mindset. The information she shares with us today is truly going to change your life. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Adventure. So we're super excited to hear, you know, to hear about your story. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, Tony, it's an honor to be here. I'm super grateful and excited to share it all. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Tell us how this all started for you. Yeah. So I guess, uh, I guess for many of us who are on a self-healing journey and then eventually uh, shift into becoming uh, space holders for that, it started um, well, way back when. No. <laughs> I guess the most relevant beginning would be uh, just after I graduated college. So I, I graduated college in 2008. Um, I went to College of Charleston, South Carolina. I had gone to uh, a pretty intense college prep, private Catholic high school. Okay. And uh, prior to that, you know, middle school was really tough. My father abandoned us. We lost our home. My mom had to file bankruptcy. There, there was a lot of like different things that happened in my younger years leading mm -hmm. up to this pivotal moment in my life, which was hiring a health coach in 2009. And, okay. you know, a lot of it stemmed from uh, some of that childhood trauma, those unhealed wounds, this incessant need to feel like I had to prove my worth on paper in order to be uh, safe, loved, and accepted, which, you know, is the three basic needs of the subconscious mind. And uh, we'll be able to get a lot deeper into this. I'm trying to just kind of like give you the, the, the big relevant picture. synopsis. Yeah, the bigger picture of the story here. So, you know... 95% of the time we're operating in our subconscious brain and the subconscious brain is constantly trying to seek that safety, love and acceptance. And what we learned within the first seven years of our life and then on into middle school and high school years uh, really formed how we are operating as adults. And for my personal story, that those unhealed wounds, those abandonment issues, the belief that I was not inherently worthy of love and safety and acceptance because of uh, a lot of that felt like it was pulled out from underneath me at a very young age manifested as me trying to prove that worth so it was again the college prep the captain of all the sports teams I was uh, participated in every extracurricular club you could imagine it was basically like as long as I'm worthy enough on paper for some university to accept me, then I'm worthy of being, uh, you know, a human being, and I'm proving to myself that I'm worthy of love and yeah, underlying stress. And this was this was not a conscious thing, you know. This was in my teenage and high school years. This is th these were coping mechanisms that I didn't wasn't aware of at the time. Mm -hmm. It's of course now hi hindsight, of course. It, is is 2020 <laughs> and the irony of that and this year is great um <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I, think that, I think we kind of all kind of go through a little bit of that when we when we go through things like that and to me I always like feel like I was the biggest people pleaser like mm -hmm. I had to you know be that person because I wanted people to like me you know always being the new girl so I can kind of relate with um, you know, wanting to look good on paper, but then also validating yourself, right, through each of those motions that you went through. So how'd yeah, that work out absolutely. for you? Yeah, not great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got into college, but I totally, you know, I, I had a complete burnout moment my senior year of high school. I was completely covered from him head to toe and space. it was the manifestation of an autoimmune disease that came from all of these underlying uh issues of stress and inflammation in my body that I didn't realize again was even happening and I wasn't processing it properly I never therapy I never really knew to seek therapy at the time I mean this was late 90s early 2000s and you know my mom did the best that she could there was nothing you know I can't look back and really criticize anything other than we all were just doing the best that we could given the information and the knowledge that we had at the time yeah so 
fast forward now into college, you know, I, I put myself through college on a bartender salary. Um, I had a, a couple scholarships, but it was primarily student loans. So there was a lot of uh, deeply rooted scarcity mindsets and beliefs that again, rooted from uh, losing our home and, and losing all of our material belongings. And, you know, at 12 years old, having all of that ripped out from underneath me and what that men and what I saw my mom and the beliefs that we that I formed my and my younger brother and I what what money was all about and you know who money was actually meant for so college was kind of again just I mean after like a breakdown and ripping up all of all of my college applications and finally just saying you know I just want to go somewhere warm I don't want to go to one of these Ivy League colleges I just want to go to warm weather I grew up in Rhode Island where it was cold and I want to do something that I enjoy so I found the College of Charleston, and it was, you know, the best time of my life. I mean, I had a great time, but again, I worked hard. It, there was this constant belief that I had to work hard again, and that life had to be hard, and that there was always this hustle and this struggle that was involved in it. And the psoriasis just got worse, and eventually my joints started hurting. And I mean, at this point, I was only 21, 22 years old. I was very active. I was, again, part I think of that needing to prove myself also landed in my body as like you know I have to physically be in the best shape ever I have to go to the gym and do these really hard workouts and you know after digging deeper into my human design and my um, genetic composition and my metabolic type and my blood type like that kind of workout is not really great for me and my Ayurvedic type like I, I'm not made for really intense hit workouts all the time and that's what I was doing all the time I was just constantly living in a state of fight or flight and stress which mm -hmm. most of us are doing chronically and we don't realize it so to to answer your question and, and to make it a little bit shorter in 2009 i finally just said I'm, i need to figure this out and then uh, it was the first time where i really allowed myself to trust my intuition and that was you know i think there's a root cause to this because i had gone to a couple dermatologists and they gave me a steroid cream and it it was just like putting a a bandaid on a bruise, you know, yep. as soon as I stopped using it, it would come back. And mm -hmm. I just knew deep down, you know, I didn't want to go to the route of immunosuppressants. And I, it's important, as I say this, for anyone listening to this, who might be on that journey, then bless that medicine. If it's helping you, if it's working for you, then bless that medicine. You know, it's not, I'm not anti-medication, but I just knew that for me and my personal journey in my life, that wasn't the route that I wanted to take. So, um, you know, back in 2009 and, and a night's worth of bartending, which was a month's rent at the time, it was 400 bucks. And I hired my first health coach. And I remember it being a really scary, huge investment thinking like, oh my gosh, like, what if, what if this doesn't work? Like, you know, this is a huge investment. This is really scary. This is a month's rent. This is a night's working. Like I, this is, but I have to do it. I just knew I had to do it. Mm -hmm. So that was in 2009. And ever since it's been a wild journey, you know, I still, she brought me through a gut healing protocol, which helped eliminate the initial inflammation in my body. Mm -hmm. uh, which really was kind of the start and journey to self-reflection. And then, you know, for the following 10 years, really, it was just more and more deeper layers of self-reflection. I was still very much in that scarcity mindset. I was chasing the uh, C-suite office and the business card. And again, all of these BS things that I thought were going to lead to happiness, you know, mm -hmm two and a half kids and a white picket fence. And someday when you're 80, you'll be happy. That was the quote unquote American dream in my mind at the time. And a divorce, a marriage and a, a divorce later. And, and I decided to basically throw everything out the window. I became a yoga teacher and it, it, it very quickly became this process of letting go of what I was believing that I needed in order to be safe, loved and accepted. And really just self-reflecting and saying, you know what, maybe I'm actually just inherently worthy of those things. And maybe some of these other things that I've piled on and put on as armor and shields, maybe they're just too heavy and I have to start taking them off to start mm -hmm. truly healing. And, you know, fast forward again, now I became a yoga teacher in 2013. And ever since then, it's been an amazing journey. I got divorced in 2015. And then I, uh, sold all my belongings and I decided to jump on super yachts and I was a 
private yoga teacher on super yachts for five years and traveled the world as a nomad and uh, met my now husband and, and love of my life and have been remarried. And, and now as a mentor and a health and life coach, I can do it from anywhere in the world. And what I always say is this was, this was always the path. This was always the journey. It was just getting there. It took me a little while because I was resistant to it for so long because mm-hmm. Well, it still was just like teaching yoga. My first yoga class was 2004. I thought I could never be a teacher. I would never want to do that. And sure enough, that was the next right step. So yeah. this was the, the so next amazing. evolution. Yeah. And isn't that so amazing how your body was trying to tell you so many years ago that mm-hmm. like, hey, what you're doing is not right. Like, listen over yep. here. And we yep. fight that intuition so much. And we have been programmed. Like you said, this is, this is how my life is going to go this is the path I'm going to take. And if you just quiet and listen, you're, I mean, your body, like when this started happening to you, would you say you were in college or high school? Like, yeah, the, the rashes came in high school. So this was a lot, many, many years ago. Yeah. I graduated high school in 2004. And it's, and it's, I, I love the journey that you went on. It got you right to where you're supposed to be today. Um, it's just so amazing to me because I, through the interviews that I get to do and get to meet amazing people from around the world, thank you technology, right? Like you're in Portugal right now. Yes. Is that where you're at? And yep. it's just, once you let go, your whole world just like em- explodes into this whole new thing that you, you know, could have been an accountant sitting at a desk job in North Carolina, like miserable. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You, you started listening to that and following that. That's amazing. Yeah. And I think that process, you know, now that is the secondary gain. I always like to say, or the the secondary benefit to working with me as a coach is we start on the visceral level. You know, it's very parallel to uh, the yoga teachings, you know, yoga asana is the physical shape. That's just one of eight spokes of an eightfold path. You know, there's, there's eight different uh, journeys to the deeper teacher teachings of yoga and the asana, the physical postures is just one. And the reason why you start there is because that's where you have the most control. That's what you can see, touch, taste, feel, and hear. That makes the most sense. That's the beginning. It's your breath and your physical body. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing uh, on a self journey and, and a self discovery uh, to what I, what I say, you know, your most abundant and fulfilled life where you're actually waking up feeling energized and excited for the day ahead and feeling good and feeling inspired and feeling like you're not just running the rat race of life anymore. And, and you, it has to start somewhere. And I always say like, you can't do the mindset work if you're waking up every day in pain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, the approach to, what I do with my clients is really starting with the physical so you can get those measurable results. You can start very quickly feeling energized again. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, I'm tapping into these wells of energy that I didn't even know that I had. And now I'm actually seeing clearly. And I'm realizing that what was holding me back this whole time was actually my own beliefs. And a lot of them were imprinted on me from somebody else a long time ago. But, you know, that process of awakening, it starts with eliminating, you know, eliminating the physical inflammation in your body, eliminating parasites or bacterial overgrowth or viruses in your body and, or, uh, you know, food that's causing inflammation as well as the other stressors that are causing inflammation in your life. What else are you consuming other than food? What content are you consuming? What energy of other people are you around and consuming all the time? Those energy vampires, like Mm -hmm. who are you bleeding yourself out to for lack of a better term? And where can you start pulling in your resources again and tapping back into those deeper wells of abundance? And like you said, a lot of it is just that, letting go and, and mm-hmm. decluttering. It's, it's the first thing I do with my clients is we have to declutter. We have to declutter the kitchen, the environment, the emails, the social media feeds, you know, the calendar. We got to just start saying no, because there's definitely value in, in being a yes person in this kind of circles around to being that, you know, the chronic people pleaser. Majority of my clients go through 
majority of my clients start in that same boat as people pleasers. And I was the same. And, you know, until we start realizing where it's actually coming from, it can be really challenging to start shifting that and the beliefs behind it um, until we start feeling really good in our bodies. <laughs> and then it starts to become a little bit easier. Yeah. So it's a very holistic approach that you're talking about, but specifically focusing on the, the gut health. Are you, um, because you're right, so many factors, you know, you're getting hit from so many ways, but it is important what you're putting in your body and, and mm -hmm. directly how you feel and what your skin looks like and your energy levels and how well you sleep at night and like all of that factors in. So do you work through a program like are you like focused on people's diet too of, you know, Hey, let's yeah. look at your diet. Let's look at your sleep. Like, how do you, how do you help people with the gut health part of it? Definitely. So I do have a healing protocol and it's, it's parallel and very similar to the one that my health coach back in 2009 put me on. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a 14 day gut health reset and it is Okay. extremely comprehensive. We eliminate inflammatory foods, what I call the sensitive seven. It's uh, feel free if anyone's listening to this to write this down, dairy, wheat, soy, sugar, peanuts, corn, and eggs. Those are the sensitive seven foods where if you're having food sensitivities, typically those are going to be on the list. Okay. Um, we eliminate them for two weeks. In addition to we amping up our detox pathways. So we really look at lifestyle habits. We implement skin brushing and tongue scraping and Ayurvedic practices, um, Epsom salt baths, making sure we're breaking a sweat every day, draining our lymph every day. So really amping up the detox pathways. So that way we are A, having bowel movements that are pain-free and one wipe swipes <laughs> every single day. And yes, we, we talk a lot about poop. If you're not pooping every day <laughs> or if it hurts or if it's a mess in the toilet, like we need to get on the phone together because your poops should be very easy pain-free and, and they shouldn't be something you dread every day. <laughs> and I say shouldn't, you know, should, would, could. I'm not saying that with judgment. I'm just saying maybe there's something to get curious about yeah. there because it's a perfect sign. It's, it's one of the first signs of dysbiosis in the body. Of course, in addition to those secondary symptoms like chronic fatigue or rashes or migraines or anxiety and depression, you know, emotional instability, the gut brain access is very connected. So Yes, there is a healing protocol that we go through for sure. I also have a naturopathic doctor that I've partnered up with. If there's some deeper layer healing that we need to look into based on your own personal signs and symptoms that you're experiencing, we can do hormone testing via a, uh, it's called a Dutch test. It's a urine test, or we could uh, get blood work drawn, or we could do a stool sample test and do a GI map testing. Uh, and then the naturopathic doctor goes over that protocol and we implement another protocol. Uh, but I always joke and I always like to say, you know, what we think gut healing actually, what we think it looks like is, you know, taking probiotics and mm -hmm. eating salads every day mm -hmm. and, you know, working out more. And, and it's actually so much more about managing stress and sleeping more and probably working out less or at least less intensely. Um, you know, it, it really all comes down to what is your unique body type. So a lot of my clients end up coming to me and say, you know, I've done this diet or that diet for ages and I've been on this protocol for ages and I'm really confused and really uh, stuck. And this is what you know, a, a big takeaway for anyone listening to this, and again, that secondary layer to trusting your intuition. And, and my tagline, if you see on my website, is trust your gut and digest your life. Like, literally, you're, you are the expert of your body. And if anyone tries to tell you otherwise, you should run the other way. No doctor knows you better. No dietitian knows you better. Nobody is the authority of your body besides yourself. You have to trust your own sovereignty. And that is my specialty. And what I do is I, of course, we have that healing container to help hold space and get curious to find the root cause. But ultimately, you are the expert. So, you know, I, I have training, I have tools, I have options and resources to help us like dive deep and get into the mud together. But at the end of the day, the longer intention is, okay, once we've implemented that healing protocol, 
Now we start reintroducing the foods. And this is the key missing piece for most quote unquote diets. And this is why I always say you die in dieting and you heal in health. It's really a mindset shift. We are not promoting a diet mentality, deprivation mentality. We're doing this to get smaller or to prove our safety, love and acceptance. Like we are doing this to really find the root cause and potentially eliminate those uncomfortable symptoms that we are chronically feeling and then to create a lifestyle from it. And in order to do that, we have to reintroduce those foods. And it's amazing that once we create that healing protocol, actually how much better, I mean, we are adaptable, amazing beings. You know, our microbiome in our gut is a rainforest of bugs and bacteria that thrive on prebiotic foods and a, a variety of foods. So if you're listening to this and thinking like, gosh, I could never eat more than one Brussels sprout without being bent over in pain, or, you know, I just, I'm just eating butter and bacon all day, every day. Cause someone told me that that would help me lose weight. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I just, you're not eating prebiotic foods because it might hurt or someone told you that it's not good for you. I really would just ask you to question deeper into your own heart. Now I'm not saying again, I am not the expert on your body. For some people that really works and for some people it doesn't, but I would encourage you to get curious. And you know, once we start reintroducing the foods, this is when we really kind of start digging a little bit deeper into, well, what is the root cause of that chronic fatigue, for example? Okay, your hormones are, are out of whack. So that is causing your chronic fatigue, but why are your hormones out of whack? Mm -hmm. That isn't even a root cause. That is a symptom of something else that's underlying chronically in your lifestyle or in your body. Because whoever wants to convince you otherwise, I'm telling you here right now that your immune system is meant to help you. If it's fighting your body like Western medicine, and I'm, again, I'm not anti-Western medicine, mm -hmm. thank God for it. Yeah. But if they're trying to convince you that your immune system is attacking yourself and, and it's all your fault and your, you know, your immune system, you just have to kill it in order for these symptoms to go away. I would just curiously encourage you to dig a little bit deeper because you are made in the image of God in the image of the divine in the image of that, which is greater. Like your body is made perfectly and your immune system is meant to protect you so if it's on high alert and you're struggling with symptoms of autoimmune dis-ease maybe mm -hmm. it's just confused maybe it's just confused maybe it's fighting the the good fight but it doesn't know what to fight because mm -hmm. we live in this world of mass confusion mm -hmm. i went on a i went on a big spiral there i but. love it <laughs> <laughs> i love it and it is so true our bodies are meant to heal and that yeah. is the bottom line i i really i totally believe that too so yeah, that's one of the paradigms it sounds like your journey is you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do i mean you're inspiring me i'm like okay she's right i've said all those things to myself in my head <laughs> like, i know exactly where you're going with this um yeah. So how do you stay inspired? Like you're out there inspiring people every day. Like you're teaching them about their bodies. You're inspiring them as their life coach and their health coach and their gut coach. Um, what keeps you motivated to keep the high energy that you have? Thank you for that question. I have my own therapists and coaches for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I have a therapist. I have a business coach. You know, I have a uh, friends and mentors who are also health coaches, we kind of exchange services. Mm -hmm. So those, you know, I, I have my support as well. So and I think that's also really important. You know, the best therapists have therapists, the best coaches have coaches. And I think yep. that's really important to remember. And again, like if, if, if the experts are just what, who, who, what is an expert? Because someone has a piece of paper saying that they studied this for a long time. Like it, it makes no sense. We're constantly on a journey to learning. So, um, you know, what keeps me inspired are, are my, my community, my clients, you know, my people on social media, which, you know, all of my, my, I don't even like to, my community, it's not, I hate even to say followers It's the people who I connect with on social media mm -hmm. are, are really my community because I've been a nomad for so long since 2015, we still are nomadic. I really had to change some limiting beliefs that I had around launching a business without having a land community and, and 
leaning into my community keeps me inspired. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only that, I think, and I don't, look at me, I, I'm censoring myself even as I say it, which I'm trying to break through, but really what keeps me inspired is, is reflecting back on my own journey. So I would encourage for anyone who's on a self-development journey is to look back at some of your milestones and accomplishments in your life. You know, this is not about always being positive or high energy or go, go, go. In fact, the reason why I'm inspired and energized when I show up is because I spend a lot of time incubating. I spend a lot of time nurturing myself. I spend a lot of time building self-care into my daily structure and daily routine. For me, this is a non-negotiable. And this is what works for me. And my again, my Ayurvedic um, doshas and my human design and all these, you know, enneagram numbers, all of these different self-development tools and self-reflective tools where you can look at just to be able to have maybe more information on yourself and be able to design your life in a way that supports you first. And part of that is when you are feeling low energy or what I would say like lower vibrational on the emotional spectrum, because emotions are all on a spectrum. They're not good or bad. They're just higher vibrational or lower vibrational. Um, and you can Google that emotional spectrum down at the bottom are things like shame and guilt, uh, raising up a little bit is sadness and anger, and then raising up a little bit higher than that is uh, joy and peace. But if you're like down in some of the lower vibrational emotions, how do you spiral up? And you can't just jump from shame to gratitude. There's like too big of an energetic jump. So in order to stay inspired, and this is my personal journey, is I reflect a lot on where I've been in the past and what I've overcome. So I would encourage anyone listening to this to do the same. We have a lot of proof in our life that we are resilient, we are smart, we are uh, powerful, you know, and, and society wants us to believe the otherwise because everyone out there is selling a quick fix or selling that magic pill or selling that thing that's gonna give you health, wealth, and abundance. When in reality, that's all here already. And I think feeling encouraged to look at your own journey when you are feeling low vibrational, and, and again, I'm answering this as a mirrored question, but this is my own process as well, as I look back and I, I just add a lot of compassion to the human experience. We are all spiritual beings on a human path and we experience all emotions on a spectrum. You know. Today is election day in the United States. I'm sure we are all feeling that collective like buzzing up and out and that anxiety. So getting back into the body, experiencing compassion for the process and then allowing yourself to be an inspiration. And then of course, leaning into your support network when uh, maybe it's hard to dig into it yourself. And uh, that's what I offer to my high touch point clients is, is that constant, consistent accountability and support via voice message on WhatsApp. It's, it's, it's imperative that we have that support. You know, we are, uh, we are people, people, we're not meant to do mm -hmm. this life alone. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I love that. And I always, I always talk about you sometimes are, have to be your own biggest cheerleader, like yes. create those little encouraging videos and just like, yes, you got this. You can do this. Like I am a big proponent mm -hmm. of that. I like your idea and your story of looking back at your accomplishments and just really, mm -hmm. You know, sitting in the, you know, sometimes we'll go past the goal so quickly, we don't stop to like really enjoy, hey, I just did this big, huge thing, like just mm -hmm. to sit and enjoy it. We just are like, oh, next thing, what's next? What's next? What's next? So I really yes, like that. That's one thing. I do it with my clients every single call. We start with what are we celebrating today? Mm -hmm. What went well in the last 10 days? Because again, we are, our soul is expansive. We are always expanding up and out. And that is the nature of who we are. We are, we want to grow. We want more. We want to expand. And that's beautiful. And in order to climb that mountain, we have to stop along the way and enjoy the view, right? Yep. We have to celebrate it. And yep. I, I think stopping that celebration can be, um, 
yeah, detriment, detrimental to the journey and not giving yourself the credit that it's due. And I think writing, writing yourself letters can also be really powerful. You know, if, if you're feeling really high vibe, it's a great opportunity to write yourself a letter and it doesn't have to be a novel. It can just be a note of the things you see and what you feel. And this is something I do with my clients. It's called future pacing, you know, really getting clear on what will it feel like in your body to have accomplished this goal? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Who are you with? What do you see? What does it feel like? You know, really go there and then, okay, what's blocking you from feeling those feelings and from seeing those things and how can we remove those blocks in order to uh, have inevitable success? Because that's really what we're going for is inevitable success. Uh, and then also simultaneously, when you're feeling low vibe, then maybe write yourself again, just a few notes, you know, today, the sky is gray and it's tough to get out of bed. And when you're feeling the opposite, maybe reference back to all pieces of yourself. And, you know, Tommy, I always like to say the self-care is truly about creating a life that you're not having to numb out from mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. being in those emotions with compassion and just saying, all right, what are the facts? The facts are today it's overcast and I'm struggling to get out of bed cool. How does that make me feel? Well, it makes me feel like crap and guilty about it. Awesome. Can you just be in that for now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I can. And when I do that, maybe it doesn't feel so all consuming. Can you trust yourself to be able to come out of it? I think I can with the right support and the right accountability. Awesome. What support do you need today? Well, maybe just check in with me in an hour and make sure that I ate something. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I love that. I love that. So um, on the topic of inspiration, do you have any, and then the flow of books, beauty, and business, do you have any yes. books that you like to recommend to people like, hey, mm. this will change your life or what do you know? You know, there's pro you probably are like me and have like 10, but yeah. What, what are some of your favorite book recommendations? Yeah, so it's funny because the ones that come to mind are, are I don't read too many self-help books because again, I, I have seen over and over in the kind of wellness Western mindset that optimal health now has just become this other thing that I have to accomplish and to do. And I have to outsource all my information to the experts in order to get there. However, there, are, there have been a few books that have been life-changing for me that I always recommend. And the first one is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Yep. It's like 100, 150 pages. It's an easy it's read. It's a beautiful great book. story. Yeah. Of, you know, and it's a fictional story. So it's an enjoyable read as well. And there's so many nuggets of wisdom in there. Um, another one that I really loved recently was Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Big Magic was, was a cool way to think about creativity and really just creating your life for the sake of getting creative and not for the likes. Okay. <laughs> not for, okay. you know, not for the dopamine hit. And yeah. she has a, a really cool way of inspiring creativity as just this fluid living thing. And she says something in there that's so cool. And I'm sure Tony, you can think of times in your life where this has happened, how creative moments are alive. And she, she explains it in the way that that aliveness will jump to different people until the right person like feels it or absorbs it and brings it to life. Mm -hmm. So she, she gives examples of really synchronistic things where of course she's writing a book. She never wrote it. She finds someone and they have the same exact storyline in their head. And it's this, you know, this very interesting thing or where you like, you think of something and then all of a sudden, you know, you don't do that thing. And then you see it online. A few Everywhere. Later think, it's that oh, universal that's... energy that you either are yes. trapped into or you're not, but somebody is going yes. to do it. Yep. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that's a really fun, creative kind of perspective on, mm -hmm. um, I don't even like to call it like self-development. It's, it's just creativity in your life and enjoying your life in a way that's playful and from a childlike perspective. Um, another one that I really loved, I, I love Brene Brown. I, I listened recently to Dare, Dare to Lead. Uh, she, a lot of her work has really inspired me in the work that I've done. And she has dedicated her life to the study of uh, vulnerability and shame. And she says, you know, when, 
When vulnerability is met with empathy, shame can no longer exist. And this is how we collectively can come together and heal and rise up. Uh, that one was a little bit more, I will say, uh, I don't want to say sterile. It wasn't sterile, but compared to Big Magic, with, which felt magical, this was a very, um, you could take a lot of points to, and especially if you are a leader, if you, you know, I've been in yachting for a long time for all my chief stews, for all my head of departments. If you work in a corporate environment and you have a team under you, if you work in a restaurant and you're a manager, you know, I think learning how to lead people or if you have a platform and a, and a following and a podcast or a social media platform, how do you balance that leadership and inspiration in a way that is vulnerable? And, uh, and all, uh, the word classy wants to come through because I do think there's this sort of trend happening in the wellness world where, where vulnerability has shifted to oversharing sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think there is a time and a place for certain things, but she dives a lot deeper into it. Yep. Um, and the last book I'll share that I love that I'm reading right now is by a woman, Helen Jacobs, and it is called You Already Know. Mm. And this is a, a little bit more on the uh, intuitive spiritual side. And it really teaches you from that perspective, because, because of course, again, the secondary layer to my work is how to trust your intuition, trust your gut and digest your life. You know, all that we are consuming, if we are not absorbing the nutrients, absorbing the life lessons and eliminating the toxins, or, you know, literally crapping out all of the stuff that we don't need, <laughs> then uh, it's, it's hard to remember. It's hard to remember why we're here. It's hard to remember what we're, you know, that we're here on purpose and for a purpose. Mm -hmm. But this, this book is, um, it's a little bit more on kind of, again, the spiritual realm and self-reflective uh, journaling prompts uh, using kinesiology. I like to use kinesiology and muscle testing to kind of see like, okay, coinciding with my yoga practice what body is it my physical body my emotional body my spiritual body or my mental body that needs nourishment and you know what do I need to kind of work on right now to tap back in just like you said to that universal collective creativity mm -hmm. and and energy those yeah are, those are my top ones <laughs> I love it I love it so I I've I've read all of them except the last one. So I'm super excited to have a new one yeah. to dive into. And it's funny that yeah. you said the big magic because I told my daughter, I was like, okay, you need a book because we're gonna we're gonna read books together during this whole COVID thing. Um, Amazing. and that was the book that she wanted me to get for her. So I'm gonna have to go steal it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is it. really good. Because and I asked her about it, so I'm super excited about that. Okay, so <laughs> I know our time is almost up. So give us yeah. one of your beauty tips. One of your daily Ooh. Use non-toxic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so everything. Yeah. Yeah. And actually something, a beauty tip that I, uh, well, if you're really curious, I've been no poo method and how ironic as a gut health coach, uh, no shampoo method. I've, I haven't used shampoo in over two years. Uh, you can dive deep into that whole process on my Instagram, the Chelsea Haynes. I have a whole story highlight on it. I also have a podcast episode. And if you go to a blog post on my website, the No Poo Method, it, it links all of that and why I went on that journey and what it meant to me and the intention behind it and the process of it. But the moral of it is all gut healing. So for anyone listening to this, if you've ever heard of a birth control patch or a nicotine patch... There's a reason why that works, nope. right? Everything we put on our skin, we absorb and we forget that. Nope. <laughs> you can literally put a sticker on and not get pregnant. Like that's crazy. <laughs> so, you know, if you are, if you needed proof of your lotions and your creams and your shampoos and everything that you're putting on your body, your skin has a microbiome just like your gut does, and one reflects the other. So what you're putting on your skin affects your gut microbiome, which is affecting your mental and emotional well-being. And what you consume in your gut is also affecting your skin microbiome. So things like eczema and rashes and um, yeast infections, you know, all of these different things are signs of potential dysbiosis. So my big beauty tip is start slowly. If you haven't started before, find someone who sells beauty counter. That's a great place to start it to support other women entrepreneurs and local businesses. Uh, you know, you can also just keep it really simple. 
you know, I use coconut oil for basically everything. <laughs> everything from, you know, lube and lotion to mouth pulling to I put it on toast. Like coconut oil you can use for basically everything. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So yes, I am completely aware of the, the natural things that you should put in your body. And there's actually a website and I don't know the name of it right now. If I can find it, I'll put yes. it in the description, but you can put any product in it and it will green, yes. yellow, red light it for you. Right. And so you, I, yes. And I, I have it linked. Yeah. Oh, okay. actually, if you go to my Instagram, you go to, go to an IGTV. I shared a whole thing on the skin gut axis similar to the gut brain axis is the skin gut axis i can't remember the name of the website either but i have it linked on the igtv so you can find it there we can shampoo. link it below johnson and johnson had red and that's when i was like yep. I'm, I'm putting this on my child and i got financial yep. now not using shampoo girl yes okay first of all i have super oily hair what do I do? Do I just yep. get it wet and then dry it? I mean, what are you not doing? Cause I've yep. heard this and not asked any questions about it and just said, yes, maybe later. What is the so, shampoo? I'd love to preface with that oil is potentially because every time you wash it, not potentially it's because every time you wash it, you're stripping the oil. So it's kind of like using a natural oil on our face. If we give it oil, it stops producing oil, okay. right? So if we are stripping the natural oils from our scalp, then it will overproduce oils because that those oils are super good for luscious locks, right? <laughs> As you but, like flip your luscious yeah. locks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to show people because they're like, I don't believe you. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I use a shampoo brush. So similar to a skin brush, it's a physical rubber bristled brush with large bristles. You can, if you go to my website, click hair and skincare, it'll link you to Amazon. You can find them. It's, it's about the size of my palm. Mm -hmm. And, and what it does basically it exfoliates the scalp and it also drains, you have lymph nodes, just like you have on your throat and your armpits and your groin and all over your body. Those are the places you can primarily feel them easiest. You have them on your head as well. So this, this, skin, this shampoo brush will help you with that transition. So if you decide to transition off of shampoo, it will be a transition period. Uh -huh. You will be super greasy for a long time. Think about However many years, I mean, for the first 33 years of my life, I used shampoo. And now all of a sudden I'm 35. My, my scalp had to find its natural pH balance again. So that's what it's all about. It's allowing your skin to find its natural pH, allowing it to find its natural rhythm of producing oil because it's, again, it's overproducing because we're constantly stripping it because we're constantly wanting it to not be oily. And then we're mm -hmm. filling it up with dry shampoos and we're trying to battle this oil if we stop doing that, there will be a transit. My, my transition period was about two months. And it does depend on your water and how hard it is, how soft it is, if you have a filter. So again, I, I have a whole blog on it and how to okay. do it. You can use apple cider vinegar and baking soda to help with the transition to kind of clean out some of the gunk in the grime. Um, yeah, you want to nourish it with aloe vera. Uh, but I have a lot of tips on how to do it, but again, before you even do it, and this is how I say with any healing process, you have to figure out your why first, because yes. I mean, for me, it was again, psoriasis. I had psoriasis all over my scalp and it doesn't mean that I don't struggle with it any at all anymore. You know, I still have flare ups. So, you know, healing is kind of this forever balance for me, but mm -hmm. I feel very grateful. It's a, it's been a huge success for me that I no longer have to use dander shampoos. I know I've never had to do go down that road of immunosuppressants and kill my immune system. And as a nomad, I, that would be impossible. <laughs> you know, I just don't want to do that. Um, yeah. So set an intention, figure out your why. And if living no tox is not an option, then find low tox options. I mean, the transition now doesn't have to be so dramatic. I went cold turkey because I have a tendency to to mm -hmm. do that but <laughs> yeah. you know again oh, there's yeah yeah i mean I, I i know that beauty counter has some friends who sell beauty counter. i know beauty counter sells some low tox shampoo and conditioner options you might just want to try going from washing your hair every single time you shower to maybe just once a week you know so 
there's a few different ways that you can do it, but I think tapping into your why is probably the most yeah. important thing to do. <laughs> what amazing advice you've given us today. This has Yay. been so great, Chelsea. So, okay. So while we're wrapping up, I will have all of your details at the bottom. I'll have your website. Anyway, anyone can contact you because I'm sure listening to this, people are going to have so many questions for you. I mean, there's so much great information in this. Do you have any last motivation or advice for the ladies before we wrap up? Yes. Uh, start in sourcing rather than outsourcing. Okay. <laughs> you are so wise. Your gut, those instincts, your intuition, those, uh, those little whispers of, you know, is this job for me? Is this marriage working out? Is, is the school I'm sending my kids to the right thing? for them start listening to those whispers in your heart and start insourcing start listening and start peeling back the reasons why you are outsourcing information i'm going to the mom blogs and i'm going to the uh the business experts and i'm going to the health experts and i'm looking for the answer y'all i cannot emphasize this enough you have the answers already there and if you need help uncovering them and digging deep and like pulling out all the weeds that are messing up your garden, please send me a message because that's the intention. And, and to remind you that you are here on purpose and for a purpose and you have all the answers. That is it. Just start insourcing rather than outsourcing. Oh, I absolutely love it. Oh my gosh. I loved our conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending yeah. time with us today. And I know our listeners are going to love this as well. So I am excited to continue watching your adventures as you Thank travel you. the world. And we all live vicariously through you and your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tony. It's been such an honor and a pleasure to share all the things. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye for You're now. Welcome. Bye. <laughs>